guys, we're back today. We're doing a special fast thought. So you're going to see this. Normally, we put these out like Thursday night, Friday morning. Uh, last week, we put out, um, you know, a pretty urgent call that the government was doing some funky stuff with legislation. Um, as usual, we kind of understood it and kind of didn't. And we asked if someone who actually understood what was happening would come on. <laughs> and Aaron has um, really graciously complied to come on. I think he's about to tell you that we missed the broad side of the barn, which is totally cool by us. Um, but what we really love is um, that he's here to kind of set us straight and kind of tell us what we got to dial into. So Aaron, thank you for joining us. Well, when the, uh, the this commerce life bat signal goes out, you, you tend to <laughs> respond. So it, it, uh, it took me a day or two, but I, I saw it in the sky. And I, I well, he's just working. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, th th thanks for uh, thanks for teeing this up. I, are there some details we can correct from last time? Yes. <laughs> um but did you broadly get the urgency behind it um i think you did and and i think it's uh you know we often quote that 75 percent of canadians use a natural health product on a regular basis so as yeah. much as we can kind of get in our own ecosystem and say this is an industry thing it's really a canadian thing and i think uh as the majority of people do use these products on a regular basis they're, they're going to want to know what the impact of what Health Canada is doing, not only to potentially their business, given given your audience, uh, but just them as a general consumer of these products and industry. Cool. Awesome. Set us straight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So a little bit of a history lesson, just to sort of line it up for people. Uh, Standing Committee on Health uh, released 53 recommendations back in 2004, I, I believe. My team's going to yell at me. I probably got the date wrong, but early 2000s. And within there, it was a whole framework on how natural health products should be managed. And, Health Canada has really been working its way through those 53 recommendations over the years. Um, in 2014, uh, there was another uh, standing committee on health that made the determination that natural health products were not drugs. They were a distinct set of regulations that should apply to both and really identified that there was a lower risk framework that was required. Uh, different from prescription drugs and most of natural health products have uh, a much different and lower risk profile um, than what traditionally would be pharmaceutical drugs. In that 2014 decision, they developed this self-care framework, which was their commitment really to industry to say, we get you're different, we get the profile and the risk profiles are different. We're gonna do a bunch of things that are gonna help you guys be able to bring products to market and be able to ensure that Canadians have safe and effective access to natural health products. The challenge we've got in front of us is now Health Canada has decided to roll out sort of in the wrong order a lot of the things that really were developed under the self-care framework. Um, so the first one we came across was something that um, listeners might have heard of in uh, something called Vanessa's Law, which is really a mandate for product recalls and, mm -hmm. and adverse report, um, right. effects reporting. Um, the way that they've gone about introducing that is really where we've got a big challenge. They slipped a non-budget item into a budget, which is just kind of a sneaky way to get something to go through. Um, so we've raised some alarm bells around that. The two bigger ones, though, are around labeling requirements and this thing called cost recovery. So the labeling regulations went through in the summer of last year. Right. And that's basically telling industry, look, you've got to change what you put on the labels. You've got to add some additional contraindications. You've got to change font sizes. The issue we see is it's actually driving more packaging, more labeling, reduced recyclability, poor um, impact from a sustainability standpoint with very little evidence to prove that it's needed. So I sort of joke, it's a really elegant solution to a problem that nobody has. Great, we'll make the fonts bigger. We didn't even know the font size was a problem, right? So they've, they've rolled right. that out. That went through last summer and they, they're looking to initiate that um, in 2025. Um, and talking about this sort of piecemeal approach of rolling these things out, then at the beginning of May, they announced that they are doing a consultation on cost recovery. What is cost recovery? Cost recovery is basically government saying what it costs us to administer this um, to the population is something that should be paid for by industry. It was part of the 53 recommendations. It was part of the outline on self-care framework, but it was supposed to come at the end of the process. And why I highlight that is there's efficiencies that have to be built into the system as you learn what is needed, right? So you've got to update monographs so that licensing is easier. You've got to reduce backlogs. Right now we've got two to three year waits on some licensing. Um, so with cost recovery comes commitments on service levels. Right? I'll pay you money, but you got to deliver the product in time. Right. 
they haven't done any of those improvements. So I think I was joking with you guys the other day. It's like, you know, signing up to buy an Audi in 10 years, you get to the end of that 10 year period and you're slipped to Ford and the bill is for a Ferrari. Right. So you've got this really clunky, broken system that the costs are heavily inflated on. And now government's coming back and saying, well, you know what industry, you can foot the bill. So there's tons of issues in that. Biggest one being most Canadian supplement companies were already concerned about labeling and the timing of cost recovery is also 2025. So I've got a small business that I know about that will incur a quarter of a million dollar cost for labeling and an additional $400,000 cost for cost recovery. It's just, it's not a viable business model anymore. No. Um, so they've layered on these costs in both cost and timing. <clears throat> And it's really, it's really pushing um, businesses to consider where they operate. Is it worthwhile operating in Canada? It's going to drive prices up on the products that do remain, given the cost to administer this and bring it to market. And ultimately, it's going to drive people to buy products online. And the challenge From our neighbors to the south, exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. where the regulations are totally different, and they say whatever they damn well please. There is a 90-day exemption on a lot of commodity categories, including natural health products. Yeah. That'll to buy 90 days worth of product uh, without it having to be regulated in Canada. It's a big concern for our industry because you can buy products online that are not, not only are they not regulated the same way they are in Canada, they're not monitored the same no. way they are in Canada. So with a mandate of ensuring Canadians are safe, Health Canada is kind of putting an extra padlock on the front door when there was already six padlocks <laughs> and they left the bloody screen door open on the side. They said, well, Canadians yeah. will buy whatever they want. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're turning the screws on a compliant industry, forcing them to consider whether they can operate in Canada or not, yet you've done nothing to control the unregulated, right. unmonitored products online. So it's just, it's a culmination of all these things coming forward. And that's why we've, as an industry representation sort of organization, we said, look, we've, we've got to put our hand up. This is enough. You've got to stop. But I, I would say, you know, with three quarters of Canadians using these products on a regular basis, this is a concern or should be a concern for all Canadians. They so don't know this though, Aaron. They don't no. talk. We don't talk. We don't talk about this on the news. And when we do, it's spun. So when you talk about labels and all the shit that goes on a label, it's vitamin D. I don't need to buy the encyclopedia attached to the bottle so I can learn nothing about a pretty benign, well, good for you, all that. But really, what's it gonna do to you? What's yeah, and, the adverse effect? And, and Kenny, I don't, I don't disagree with how you frame that. I, I would actually say, though, that the narrative needs to be the regulatory system in Canada is world leading. Our problem well, was is world leading. We don't have world leading implementation of that regulatory framework. Yeah. Yeah. So the tools are there. There's tools a free market yeah. approval for everything that goes out. Every claim that you see on a product that has a natural health product num yeah. uh, number has been approved by Health right. Canada to be in market with the claims that it's right. not. Uh, the studies, the, the the background information is demanded by Health Canada before right. that product comes to market. If the science changes, Health Canada can mandate more information. Right. So if you're buying a licensed natural health product, your, your degree of comfort with that should be extremely high. Um, and we want to continue that. We all believe that it's important to have access to those things. But, but when you're allowing non-licensed products to be sold directly to Canadians and you're forcing other good law-abiding regulatory compliant in, uh, companies to consider whether they have a viable business at all. We're, we've really got the cart before the horse in terms of how these things should roll out. So, I mean, our ask is, is for government to stop cost recovery and actually engage with industry appropriately, review the sequencing of these events so that we can do a cost benefit analysis that actually reflects how much it should cost to operate this part. Um, and then actually sit down with industry and look at progressive, innovative ways to continue to push things forward. We don't need a papered labeling update when I think you guys would agree in, in five years, we're, we're going to be looking at digital labels on everything anyway. Just digital label right. it. You can do it right. now. So we've got an antiquated system that's right. being forced on an industry that's right. going to be obsolete in the next. Right. Um, so there's a lot of problems with that. And that's why we started uh, saveoursupplements.ca, um, which is just a really um, clean, uh, easy place for anyone to get information on the concerns that we've outlined. There's toolkits on there to engage with your MPs. The most important thing that anyone can do right now is make your voice heard with your um, elected uh, political representatives. It's finding who your MP is. You can do that on the site. Drop in your postal code, drop in your name. We'll populate a letter with all the key points on it. But it's political pressure at this point. And we just need politicians to wake up and realize that it, once Canadians know 
what Health Canada is trying to do, they're not going to be happy with it, and they need to make sure that their uh, their elected officials are aware of that. But how do you get them to sign up to do that, Aaron? I mean, you you know what? Most people are pretty um, complacent on a good day where really things yes. don't pay to. And again, if you don't really understand it, I mean, you, you know, when you talk cost recovery and you have to go in and, you know, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to basically copy a monograph that's been proven 50 yep. years ago, 100 years ago, what what cost recovery or what what are we, what are we doing? Is it because there's 15 secretaries or 400 bureaucrats I got to cover? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, it's vitamin D, for example, or calcium, because this is the shit that's going to get killed. And those aren't even the worst ones. Any cool combinations are going to be gone because who's going to be able to do them? The, the pay cal- I, think, I think before you go down that road, like to me, the thing that I heard out of Aaron that I feel like people need to know, right, is if you have, <clears throat> if you take a supplement that's made in Canada from a- cool You're already company, protected. No, no, but- if you take one from a company that's in Canada, that's small to medium size, right? right? Or you have a supplement in your neighborhood or in your region, in your county, whatever you will call it, municipality, postal code, both of those are in danger For of sure. having to reconsider where they make things, how they make it and how it becomes available. Like to me, that's what I heard that's most important is as a Canadian, it means I might have to change what I consume because the people who make it may not be around to do it again, right? Yes. After all of these things get implemented, right? So we had commissioned a study with Deloitte on just the labeling update. So not cost recovery, but just right. labeling up. Yeah. Which is horrific. 75% of businesses in Canada said that they would likely have to pull products from shelf. Right, exactly. Provide yeah. that. And one in five Canadian companies due to just labeling so that they were seriously or very seriously considering relocating right. to the US. Right. So to your point, Phil, it's going to drive businesses yeah. out of Canada and drive consumers to purchase online, yeah. which right. brought with a whole bunch of other issues. So but you're just talking about small, you're thinking small companies are doing that. Don't, don't, don't think the large guys are going to be lining up now to innovate and pay trillions of dollars okay. to have all yeah. these multi comp. You're not just yeah. hurting. It's not just the little guy who's going to leave. You're going to get less from the big guys too. It's expensive. If you're going to have a quarter and a half a million dollars per sort of product by the time you bury all the costs in, why do it? Or why do it here? At that point, maybe I just phone Europe and say, hey, guys, you guys need stuff. I'd rather supply that. Maybe it's easier. Maybe it's easier in the States. But but I I, I don't disagree with any of that. I just think that this one, to me, like we're usually industry guys. And I just feel like this is not an industry thing. I just feel like, like the way you're talking is... What's in my medicine cabinet right now that isn't um, an o- over-the-counter drug that has a DIN number? Or a pharmaceutical. Or, or a pharmaceutical. So anything natural supplement I take now, for every five products I have in there, I basically need to wipe out four out of the five and go, I may or may not be able to get these. Right. Again. It's kind of, do you know what I mean? Or I like, can order from the states where hear. the regulations the are numbers aren't quite that extreme, but that's what I hear, right? right? It's, well, when I think, um, Phil, Phil, to that point, I mean, people often lose uh-huh. sight of the fact that natural health products are, yes, the supplements, Kenny, the vitamin D and calcium that you're quoting. There's also there's some so complex products, there's, right? Absolutely. Deodorants, toothpaste. Like, Tons of like, stuff. It touches a ton of different categories. Tons of stuff. Yeah. And, and because of what Canada is proposing, the ones that remain on shelf, you're going to pay 20, 30% more for. Oh, easy. And the ones you really want might disappear. And to yep. your point about innovation, they introduced a new tier for cost recovery that's close to $60,000 just to apply for a license. doesn't mean you'll get it. It just means that you're going to apply in yeah. an industry that doesn't have IP protection. So a pharmaceutical yeah. doctor, you'll make the investment because you've got years to earn it back. You don't have that in the natural health product space. So you're going to ask companies to pay an exorbitant amount to bring innovation to market and then be followed up with someone else who can just duplicate the product and pay right. a fraction of the fee. Right. It's, it, will, it will crush innovation and research in Canada. I think so it, it will does, too. It doesn't get the outcome that is the mandate yeah. of Health Canada. And I think it just needs to be stopped, rethought, and then have industry actually properly consulted so that we can bring these for, forward. Industry does want the highest quality, higher standard, highest efficacy of products brought to Canadians. We share that. It's the how they're going about doing it that mm-hmm. is, is, is not aligned. And that's mm-hmm. why we just need that community engagement for everyone to sort of wherever your business is located contact that mp wherever your house is located contact that mp we we've hopefully made it super simple i think within 
probably 90 seconds, you could get both of those done on saveoursupplements.ca and just take the time. If, if natural health products are part of your lifestyle, this is something that everyone has to pay attention to. And I did then go back and focus even on that. What you just said is that we focus typically on supplements because that's where, uh, you know, a large part of the challenge, but think of all your, all your natural yep. cool stuff, all your natural shampoos, like you said, deodorants, tooth, toothpaste, think of all those cool things in your house, like walk through your cabin, it's all the cool shit. And you know what? You can say goodbye to a half of it. And, and there's always a time. Yeah. There's always a time when you think these bigger advocacy lobbying efforts are someone else's problem. Um, and I'm not so a big sad. alarmist. We've known each other long enough. I'm, I'm an optimist through and through, yeah. but, but one where if we don't get together as a, a, a community and that's both yeah. industry and consumers, there are things that could happen, which would ha reverberate for decades in terms yeah. of how this sector yeah. operates. In Canada. So, yeah. um, you know, Take, take the time now, because if, if we miss this opportunity, I mean, it's the way it's set up, the Minister of Health has the authority to push this through. It doesn't have to go to MPs for vote. It doesn't have to go to the Senate for review. It is simply sitting with the Minister of Health. And so we need MPs to voice their concerns to the Minister of Health to let them know that their constituents are concerned and that this needs to be rethought. So how, what's the time like for this? So if you're listening to a, the podcast yeah. or you're talking to friends now, so anybody listening, yeah. tell your family, talk to your friends. Are we talking months? Are we talking years? Like, is this? Yeah. Yeah. So the window for consultation is 75 days and it started on May 12th. So July, okay, so we're months down. July 26th is our window, our, our largest window to influence there. Wow. We will continue pressure. We will continue engagement, right. but if, if if the public writ large wants to have the impact they, they want to have, um, any activations prior to that would, would be helpful. We're spending the rest of this week, I'm actually flying out to Ottawa tomorrow, meeting uh, uh, MPs in Ottawa. And so they started to receive letters, they started to receive postcards, you know, they're, they're fully aware. Um, just as an additional point, we do have a postcard campaign. It's not digital, like old fashioned into the mailbox. That going out to all the independent retailers. Um, so if, yeah. if they haven't seen stores, you can ask your store if there's any of the SOS campaign available. Um, but it's the culmination of all that that's gonna that's gonna wake them up. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, we're gonna put all the relevant links down below. Um, they have made it really easy. There's a uh, save our supplements um, .ca, um, is the link, but we'll we'll put it in in the fast thoughts here. So you can hit that link and, and be able to send that right away. Um, but um, thank you for doing this. Um, Aaron, if you want back yeah. on, like, let's say if you want to give an update on how the week went, or if you yeah. want to just take it easy for a yeah. couple of weeks, but if you want yeah. to use us too, because yeah. I mean, I we've been in these categories. I've been buying these categories yeah, yeah, for 25 yeah. years. Yeah. These are important to us. I remember all the changes. I was there in 2004 yeah. when all the changes happened. I remember all this yeah. stuff. I, it's just discouraging to see this level of honestly stupidity you can be more political i don't have to be this is stupid this i'm sorry I, this I, is just really stupid i think there's very few inflection points in a sector uh that can have the existential threat that ones like these do and it is these moments i appreciate you know the opportunity to to come and talk to to you guys because it is something that if we don't get it right we're going to be looking in the rearview mirror and wishing we had tried harder i know so we're exactly we're throwing everything that we can at it okay. I, I think industry is, is engaged but to have um the opportunity to speak with you guys and i'll take you up on it in a few weeks yeah no seriously just let's ping us you know how to get a hold of us no no issues Any, anything to help anything helps too important very, very not to have uh, talks yeah thanks All so right. much guys okay thanks very All much right. Aaron. Appreciate thanks, it. Aaron.